Hello, React Native Developers. I hope you are well. William here, recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. Last week, I was tagged to this tweet asking me, can it be done in React Native? And it made me discover Adam from the Code Slice YouTube channel. Adam and I share the same haircut as well as a passion for gestures and animations. And he has great content on Swift UI animations. I hope that you will check it out. There are two interesting parts to uh, such a problem. First is to find the distortion of the shape, which basic curves we need to animate in order to create this nice effect. And the second part of the problem is the complex animation states we need to handle. So the shape might be sticking at the top, might be uh, in a free mode where you can drag it around or might be sticking at the bottom. So we need to handle these states properly and we need, of course, to transition nicely from one state to the other. So a fun problem to look at with Reanimated 2. Let's have a look. Before we get into the code, let's have a look at how we're gonna build the distortion of our shape. So I'm gonna draw the square here. <clears throat> so that's our original position. And here I'm pressing enter to flatten the square so I can move the points around. So when we distort it, we elongate on one side and we make another side narrower. So this is not uh, very symmetric. That's why I prefer to code my designs. Uh, but let me copy the SVG here. So we know that we need to draw a curve, a Bezier curve from on this side and a Bezier curve on this side. So I'm going to paste it into a path editor and try to find out how we need to build the curves. So here you see I have two line commands and I'm going to replace them. So this one, so you see the red line and this one. And I'm going to replace them with a basic curve. And I think now I need to know where I need to move these two control points. And so the first one I'm going to put so you see, you can intuitively get to it. So this one, I'm going to make it perpendicular to the destination. And this one, the source, I'm going to put it at the same position. And so that gives us the shape, the elongated shape. So I'm going to do the same with uh, the second line command, right? So here we have two horizontal lines and two uh, lines which are a bit uh, in diagonal. So I'm going to convert it into... This tool is amazing, by the way. So I'm going to convert it into a curve, make it perpendicular. Of course, here it's not really perpendicular, but in the code, we are going to make it so. And uh, here, you see, I can, you can decide what you want, but this feels very natural. So this is how we're going to animate our shape. Now we can get into VS Code. Before we get into it, of course, if you are interested to learn the fundamentals of gestures and animations in React Native, plus understanding better how the Bezier curves work and how to use them in React Native, I hope that you will check out my online course at startreactnative.dev. My goal with this course is to provide you with all the tools and knowledge necessary in order to build incredible user experiences in React Native that will run at 60 FPS, even on low-end devices. I have already a couple of uh, videos about uh, basic curves in my V1 course, and I'm currently updating the V2 course to as well uh, handle these topics. So if you're interested, I hope that you will check it out at startreactnative.dev. Now let's go into VS Code. And we're going to start by drawing an SVG Canva. And we're going to have an animated path with animated props. So SVG from React Native SVG and animated path from reanimated create animated component path comes from SVG. And so let's create our animated props. So we're going to use use animated props from reanimated 2. And here we need to define the four points 
that uh, forms a shape and then we're going to draw lines and curves between these points and they're going to animate nicely because we're doing it within use animated props. So P1 is easy, it's X0, Y0. So it's the first corner of the base. Second corner of the base is also at X0, uh, X is size. So we have size here of 150 and Y is still zero. The third point is uh, X equals size, Y equals size. So now it's the uh, first corner of the apex. And P4 is X is zero, Y is size. So now let's draw a path based on these points. So create path. And so we start at P1. We add a line to go to P2. To go to P3, it's not a line, but a curve. So we're going to add a cubic curve. Destination is P3, so 2 is P3. And the first control point we know is at P2X and I could do P2Y or zero because let me do P2Y just in case it changes and the second control point perpendicular so we know that uh, it's X is P3X and Y is zero. But I'm tempted, instead of writing zero, to write also P2Y. Let me try it like this. No, I can put zero. It's always going to be zero. Sorry about that. That doesn't matter. P2X, perfect. And then we draw the apex line, so 2P4. So and then we do the curve from P4 to P1, so from the apex to the base. So we go to P1 and so here it's the other way around. So let me do, let me see. Yeah, P4, no, let's, let's see, P4, X, Y is zero, it's always going to be zero. And here P1 X. Well, we might have a mistake here. We'll we'll see. But let's see it actually. So let's return the path. So we need to serialize it for SVG to understand. Again, we use Redash to do that. And let's add a fill color. And I think we had some uh, nice colors in the 3D video. The 3D stuff was fun, uh, such a rabbit hole. Uh, this, I mean, potentially it's, the possibilities are endless. Um, okay, some syntax errors. So let's create path, needs to be imported. What is the issue here? It's add curve. Let's have a look. So we have a square, okay. So that was a lot of uh, drama to set up a square, but of course we are setting up the, fundam the foundation so we can uh, animate it. So let's animate it. So we're gonna create a variable called progress. At zero, it's a square. At one, it's a maximum uh, deformation of the shape. And this right now, I'm gonna put one just to check. But of course, this is gonna be an animation value which we're gonna drive uh, with the pangestion handler. So <clears throat> we have progress and we need to define two variables for the maximum distortion. So how much the shape is going to be elongated at one. So I'm going to create V factor and let's say three. So it's going to be three times the size and the horizontal factor, which is how narrow it needs to be uh, when you are at the maximum. So if you put, let's say zero five, so you're going to remove half on each side. So you're going to have like a triangle. So we want something where twice H factor is going to be less than one. So let's do zero four. But, you know, we're just going to play with the values. We just put some, some random values here. 
And so we are going to interpolate based on the progress value, the distortion. So I'm going to create, uh, let's call it distortion. And we're going to interpolate, so linear interpolation from zero to one using mix from redash. And so for the X is the horizontal uh, distortion, we go from zero. So we don't remove on any side at zero. And at one, we remove the maximum, which is going to be uh, size times H factor. Perfect. And Y, again, linear interpolation. So it's going to be the vertical scale. So it's going to be one at zero and at uh, one, progress one, it's going to be V factor. So here it's a multiplication with scale. Here it's a addition and subtraction. So that's why we start at zero. Here we start at one. So that's our distortion. So we can apply it to our shape. The base never moves. It's uh, sticking. And here we're going to multiply by distortion y. Same here. And we need to, on P3, to remove uh, distortion x, and we add it here, distortion x. So that's our uh, shape when the progress is at one, let's put, you know, I can put it to zero five, I can put it to zero, it's gonna be back to a square. I put it to one, so I don't like it too much. I can make it a bit smaller here, 2.5. Let's see, and a bit wider on the top, 0.3, yeah, looks good. So we have our progress that works. Now let's drive it through the congestion handler. So this is gonna be an animation value which we're gonna receive at a pro as a prop from the gesture handler. Uh, okay, so we have progress, which is an animated value. So this becomes dot value. Sorry, animated shared value. Thank you, TypeScript. Now let's create the pan gesture handler. Unique child of a pan gesture handler is an animated view. You know the drill. So we're gonna wrap, so pan gesture handler, wrap it into a, an animated view, and then we can put our square inside. Here I'm gonna use a, an absolute fill. Perfect. So let's create, so let's import it. Let's import reanimated. And let's create our own gesture event. So we're going to register the Y translation. So I'm going to create translate Y. And we're going to create our own gesture event using use animated gesture handler. And when the gesture is active, we're going to get translation Y and assign it to translate Y. So translate Y equals translation Y. That's good. From there, we can interpolate the progress animation value from translate Y. So we're going to have use derived value. So that's a great name because we are really deriving one value from the other. And we're going to interpolate translate y dot value. That goes from zero to the maximum height. What is the maximum height? Max height is size times the maximal vertical factor. So size times V factor. So zero to max height. And 
and we go from zero to one. And we want to extrapolate. We don't want to go above and below zero one. So I need to do some imports. Pass progress as a property here. So you see up. Oh, when I release the gesture now, it needs to go back to zero. So on end, we spring back to zero. And we can use the velocity of the gesture. So velocity y, I'm going to rename it to velocity. and it bounces back into place. That's very good, fun. So now let's make it that when we push above max eight, we make it unsticked. And so here, this is interesting because we're gonna create a new state. Is the sticked state, is it sticked or not? It's a Boolean value, true or false. But so this is when we write the value, oh, we go beyond this threshold, uh, this becomes true or false. So that's when we write the value, but when we read the value, we want to always transition from one value to the other. So I'm going to create the sticked state and uh, the default value is true. But then I want, so this is for writing, for reading, I want a transition. So I'm going to do sticking is use derived value. With spring, if sticked.value is one, sorry, is true, it's one, if not, it's zero. Very good. And yeah, perfect. So if translate y.value is greater than max eight, sticked becomes false. When we finish the animation here, it becomes true. We sticked to a position. So I'm going to do sticked. And now let's use the sticking. So this is the writing of sticked. And now let's do the reading. So if sticking is uh, zero, the progress of the distortion is zero as well. So we're going to do sticking.value times interpolate. If it's one, it's the same. And if it's zero, it becomes back to a square. And if it's uh, sticking, not sticking, we also, so here's the other one, we need to be able to move the shape around. So we're gonna add a translation here. So I'm gonna create square, animated style. So use animated style. And we're going to return a transform with translate y. So here we want the opposite value of sticking. So I'm going to do one minus sticking dot value and multiply it by a translate y dot value. So this should allow us to move the shape around. Again, here you see TypeScript told me about a mistake. That's perfect. So here I'm distorting the shape up. So now I can move it around freely. Uh, and you see how it transitions nicely from one state to the other. So there's nothing abrupt uh, going on here, which I'm really enjoying. Now let's make it so that it can potentially stick at the bottom. Um, so we're going to add a new state. Is on top use shared value so default is true so now when we spring we need to know if we go to the top or the bottom so i'm going to use redash to tell us where to snap so destination we use snap point from redash which is a cool utility function to tell us where to snap we pass an animation value translate y dot value of velocity and our snap points which can be zero or the height of the screen but not the height of the screen because we need to see the bottom. So we're going to remove size. Now we 
spring to this destination. When the animation is over, if we moved to the opposite side, so if destination is not zero, and now destination zero doesn't necessarily mean the top because when we're at the, on the other side, we're gonna rotate the canvas. So zero means origin and height minus size means opposite side. So if destination value is different than destination <laughs> is different than zero, we um, toggle is on top, which are gonna trigger a rotation of the canvas. So it's opposite value, which means that we are, we need to have <coughs> uh, translate y dot value equals to zero. That's good. And if this value is false, we're gonna rotate the canva here. So I'm gonna create container animation style. This becomes an animated view, of course. Use animated style transform it's a rotate so if is on top values true we rotate to zero degree if not we flip around so it's 180 degrees and let's have a look so here up springing back to position and now going to the other side isn't that fun these are pretty fun to play around with. Isn't that cool? And I think here one, um, these are, I could play with this for hours, but um, one last thing I think here, I maybe I will do it offline is that if on active, so here the gesture is not really interruptible, meaning that if we start again, when the spring is not over, we are in the wrong animation state. So here in uh, on start, we should also handle uh, properly how to reset uh, the animation so that everything is uh, correct. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. A two part problem. First, the fun basic curves animation we needed to find and then the complex uh, animation state handling. And um, for sure, this would need also to be um, massaged a little bit. It's not perfect, but I, I find the solution actually uh, pretty simple and elegant. I hope uh, you will uh, agree. I have some interesting videos in the work, so I am looking forward to talk to you soon. And until next time, happy hacking.